Hey everyone, Matt Standridge here. I want to do a little bit, a little video going through a good um, case here, good Invisalign case, kind of discussing things I look for on um, our clinic checks and stuff, and when we're doing a pre-op workup. Now, students of mine, if you've been through my Ortho Foundations course, you will know um, a lot of what I'm talking about. If you haven't gone through that and you don't really understand. Um, Andrew's classifications of occlu or you know, six keys of occlusion, that type of stuff. Some of this may be lost on you, but um, because I have a systematic work through that I uh, talk about, folks. So if you've been through my classes, you'll understand this. But if not, that's okay. I hope you still kind of get something out of this. So the patient, as you can see on our pre-op photos. Um, basically a hundred percent deep bite here um, and she didn't like that she felt like her path of movements were really restricted and all that stuff um, also with my Invisalign patients I like I like I've talked to my students before there's a cosmetic driven ortho and there's more of a comprehensive driven ortho and really it's about meeting the patient's goals she wanted to kind of idealize her bite some more. So I'm going to be showing some mechanics that takes it out of just the cosmetic ortho because basically there's two ways to go about this. You could have just opened up the bite and left her with um, more overjet or um, you could idealize the bite. We've, we chose to idealize the bite. And so if we look here, if I scroll down, in our on our left side here we're fairly class one um, maybe just a hint class two if you got um, in my ortho foundations course we talk about Andrew's class uh, six keys of occlusion and really a class one we're not just looking at where this mesial buccal cusp is but where the central groove is and at not just that but also um, we're looking at uh, the premolars and canines fitting within embrasures. Here, we're pseudo class one, but over here on her right side, we are about at full half step class two. And so what are the ways that we can deal with that? And for my students, I want you to kind of think about well, what, what ways do we move teeth? What ways do we uh, form arches? It's through pro proclination, expansion or lateral development, distalization, and we also gain space by extraction or IPR, right? And so really, if we are class two here, we could potentially hide a little bit of that overjet through IPR, or the only other way that we can really do that is through distalization. And so we chose to distalize this case. Now, if you guys remember my mechanics that I've talked about, distalization is one of the harder mechanics to do. And as we keep um, really beating home about orthodontics is really Newton's third law, right? Uh, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So how we chose to settle in this bite into a nice class uh, class one occlusion and minimize an excessive overjet is um, we're going to be using the lower arch as a little bit more of an anchorage arch and we're going to be using class two elastics here. So you can see their first initial setup, we're opening the bite but not by much. And if you remember what I talk about by overcorrection, when we're dealing with 80 to 100% deep bites, I have, I set them at basically a zero overbite. And because I'm not expecting to give an end to end, where I'm, I'm not expecting to give that much. If you remember my example of like when we use open curve, um, uh, when we use a, oh, open curve wires in our arch wires and they have the swoop it's not because we're actually trying to create the swoop in the occlusion it's just because we're trying to over exaggerate our forces and overcompensate some things so here 
you can see on our initial setup, they had it quite kind of an excessive overjet for my liking. And then I, I didn't think that was going to necessarily please her. And I don't think we're going to finish there. I think we're going to finish more clothes than that. So I went through a couple of uh, clinic checks to, um, and we opened the bite more. Um, here, we opened the bite more, but it left her with even more overjet, right? After I, after I asked to go to a zero, you know, millimeter over, overjet or overbite, um, the overjet was excessive. I don't think the patient would like that. And I actually talked to her, just called her real quick. This is just like, you know, are you open to spending more time? I can get this done for you and open this bite in four months, but you're going to have more overjet. Your, your, your front teeth are going to stick out more than your bottom teeth. Or would you like to spend closer to 12 to 16 months and idealize the bite and not have that overjet? And she'd rather have that. So that's what we did. So went back for a, a third treatment plan, which you can see here. And so not only are we... Um, uh, setting the overbite to zero, but to distalize this side here, we're going through in, uh, in Invisalign, there is sequential distalization. So basically, if I take this back here, you're going to see these molars just kind of moving back one at a time. And I find if I am having to distalize more than just a couple of millimeters, so more than two millimeters, I use sequential distalization. It takes longer, but it's more predictable. Also, we want to increase the anchorage on that side, so that's why we have cutouts for a button here and cut out for a precision cut for a, uh, for a class two elastic, for a hook for a class two elastic to go. So you're going to see, I'm not doing a whole lot on that upper right now because I'm focusing on molar position, right? And I'm using this class two elastic to keep from any unwanted anterior movement. It's to help redirect that force so this stuff just goes distal. And that's where we're projected to go. And then let me bring up a photo. Um, also, we're going to be opening the bite by intruding these front teeth. Here's a smile, right? And then here is um, it in action. So they have this cutout. I use a mini mold kit to do a composite button right there, running a quarter inch um, medium class two elastic on this side. And we started that in um, we started that in September, and in about uh, about six months' time, we're getting about this much distalization here. So we moved the pre the molar second molar molar and premolars back quite a bit here. So you can see the space spaces that have opened up through that distalization, and we're achieving a nice solid. Um, class one occlusion on that side. So even though we're distalizing, we're still going to be done in less than a year and a half, which is pretty good for adult comprehensive treatment. So I, I, I hope this kind of clarifies a little bit to what I've talked about with distalization mechanics in the past. And then um, again, if you haven't taken my Ortho Foundations course, we have it available online. And we also have courses coming up at the new 3D Dentist Retreat. Um, my next class, as of this date, my next class is August 6th and 7th of 2021 out at the new 3D Dentist Retreat. And we'll have more dates of available coming up. So, and, and also we'll have the Ortho Foundations course um, available as a solo unit as well if you just want to go through more of the diagnostic stuff. So I hope you guys found value. You guys take care and have a great day.